I once asked his students, how do we know when night has ended and day has begun? The students thought they grasped the importance of this question because, after all, there are prayers that we are only supposed to say at night, and there are rites and rituals that we only do in the evening. And also, there are 
certain prayers that we only offer during the day? So this was an important question that the rabbi was asking. So the brightest of the students offered an answer first. Rabbi, when I look out into the fields and I can tell the difference between my field and my neighbor's field, that's when I know the night has ended and the day has begun. And another student said, Rabbi, when I look out and I can tell the difference between my house and my neighbor's house, that's when we know the difference between night and day. A third student offered, Rabbi, when I see an animal and I can tell the difference between a cow or a horse or a sheep, that's when I know the night has ended and the day has begun. And finally, a fourth student said, Rabbi, when I look at a flower and I can tell whether it is blue or red or green, that's when I know the night has ended and the day has begun. Each answer brought a sadder, more severe image to the rabbi's face. Until finally he shouted, no, not one of you understands. All you do is divide your house from your neighbor's house, your field from your neighbor's, this kind of animal, that kind of animal, this color flower or that color flower. Is that all we can do? Divide, separate, split the world into fragments? Is that what the Torah is for? No, students, that is not the way. That is not the way at all. The shocked students looked at their rabbi's sad face, and one of them ventured to say, well, rabbi, then how are we supposed to know the difference between night and day? And the rabbi stared back into the faces of his students, and this time with a voice that was suddenly gentle, when you look into the person next to you and you can see that that person is your brother or your sister, that's when the night has ended and the day has begun. Today we sit virtually with family and a whole community and we go through a process of distinguishing between night and day, between darkness and light, between a world that is plagued with pain and the opportunity for hope and light. We immerse ourselves in the process of tshuva and we don't do it alone. We recognize that this is a collective process that we are here with our brothers and our sisters because we cannot go through this process alone. Throughout most of the year, we respond like those students do. We divide, we separate, we split the world into fragments. But today, we work to bring our community together as one, to move into the new year by moving ourselves and our community from darkness into light. Our service begins with the Baruch Hu. Please rise. together in the chanting of the Shema. Shema.
The Micha Mocha is a song of our collective freedom. At this time of COVID-19, systemic racism, divisive politics, civil unrest, true freedom is something that hopefully none of us will ever take for granted again. Join us from your homes in proclaiming our freedom with the words of the Micha Mocha. She becogilimed the shimra al sevatayam Yahad Kulamodu, Vim Likoviamaru. Israel, whom I be as Rat Israel, who fed a Hinumeha, you would have Israel, calling what a night's about Shemo, Kedosh Israel, Paruch, Atadonai, Kaad Israel. We rise now for the Amidah. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufiagit hilatecha. Ta Adonai Eloheinu Velo Helbotinu Imoteinu Elohe Abraham Elohe Ibolio la Madonna 
Now, as we listen to the haunting chant of the Unitana Tokef, we pray not just for ourselves, but for all humanity to have a year of healing, hope, and peace. Unitana Kedushat Hayom Ki Hunara Oh, <laughs> 
Avinu Malkeinu is one of our most beautiful and beloved High Holy Day prayers. Not just because of its plaintive, heartbreaking melody, which touches us to our very core, but also because of the power of its direct and simple words, which express our deepest needs and remind us of what is truly important and what really matters. Avinu Malkeinu, our Father, our King, God of judgment and mercy, grant us life, health, sustenance, protection, blessing, compassion, and forgiveness. Avinu Malkeinu asks us to remember that the best and most meaningful things in life aren't things. We rise for the Avinu Malkeinu. Avinu Malkeinu, Shema Koleinu. Avinu Malkeinu, hear our prayer. Avinu Malkeinu, Chatanu Lefanecha. Avinu Malkeinu, we have sinned against you. Avinu Malkeinu, Chamol Aleinu, Vial Aleinu, Vitapeinu. Avinu Malkeinu, have mercy upon us and upon our children. Avinu Malkeinu, Avinu Malkeinu, rid us of pestilence, war, and famine. Avinu Malkeinu, kale kotsar, umastin me aleinu. Avinu Malkeinu, rid us of all hatred and oppression. Avinu Malkeinu, Avinu Malkeinu, inscribe us for blessing in the Book of Life. Avinu Malkeinu, male yadenu mi birchotecha. Avinu Malkeinu, fill our hands with generous deeds. Avinu Malkeinu, kodveinu besefer sericha umechira. Avinu Malkeinu, inscribe us for blessing in the Book of Forgiveness. Avinu Malkeinu, chaneinu vaneinu. Avinu Malkeinu, be gracious and answer us, treat us generously and with kindness and help us.
Havu godel Eloheinu tnu chavod la Torah. Let us declare the greatness of our God and give honor to the Torah. This morning we read from Nitzavim. It's a portion towards the very end of the Torah in which we learn that every single person, from the elders to the strangers in the camp, from the wood chopper to the water drawer, all are brought into a covenant with God, a contract, a commitment. But this covenant is different. Other references to a covenant in the Torah, the rainbow at the end of Noah's Ark, circumcision, the receiving of the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai, those were all initiated by God. But this covenant is initiated by Moses. And as our portion states, the Torah and our commitment to it is not baffling for you, nor is it beyond reach. It is not in the heavens, neither is it beyond the sea. No, it is very close to you, in your mouth and in your heart. There's a significant shift of responsibility being articulated in this message. We move from divine initiative to human initiative. As Rabbi Jonathan Sachs writes, this is what Moses was preparing the Israelites for in the last month of his life. It is as if he said, until now, God has led in a pillar of cloud and fire, and you have followed. Now, God is handing over reins of history to you. From here on, you must lead. If your hearts are with him, he will be with you. But you are now no longer children. You are adults. An adult still has parents, as a child does, but his or her relationship 
with them is different. An adult knows the burden of responsibility. An adult does not wait for someone else to take the first step. The covenant in this Torah portion marks the end of childhood for the Jewish people and begins the ongoing task of human responsibility to uphold the values and messages of our tradition. As Rabbi Sachs declares, faith is not waiting for God. Faith is the realization that God is waiting for you. So what are we waiting for? Yom Kippur is our day to recommit to taking the initiative, to living out our values and recognizing that God is close, that spiritual depth is attainable, that beauty is all around us. COVID may be keeping us apart, but that does not mean we cannot bring our tradition close to us, to feel it within our grasp. It's time we take the initiative. Don't wait to be praised. Praise others. Don't wait for someone to invite you to a socially distant visit. Initiate one with someone you know who needs a little extra support right now. Don't celebrate Shabbat when it's convenient. Just gather your family around a table, light some candles, say a l'chaim over some wine. Don't Just tally the depressing statistics and stories that you hear on the news each day. Count the blessings you experience each day. Don't just post your musings on social media. Do something substantive to bring about the change you want to see. Don't just engage in this community when you have the time. Make the time to prioritize being a part of something bigger. Don't just give your time or tzedakah when asked. Do it because the world needs whatever you can offer. Let's bring this tradition deeper into our daily lives to take initiative, to live out its ideals, and we will see just how incredibly it can change us. The wisdom of our tradition is not in the heavens. Neither is it beyond the sea. No, it is very close to you. It is in your mouth, and it is in your heart. We continue now with the reading of the Torah. We invite you all to join in the blessing before the reading of the Torah. (laughs) Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaAmim Vinna Atan Lanu Et Toroto Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen. Atem nitzavim hayom kulchem lifnei Adonai Eloheichem roshechem shiptechem ziknechem veshotrechem kol ish Israel tapchem neshechem vegercha. Asher bekerev machanecha, mechotei beitzecha, ad shoeif memecha, leobrecha, biberit, Adonai Elohecha, uvalato, asher Adonai Elohecha, koreiti mecha, Hayom leman hakimotcha. Hayom lo leam vehu yihelecha Elohim kasher di belach vecha 
And we all join together in the blessing after the reading of the Torah. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vichaye Olam Nata Betocheinu Baruch Ata Adonai Notein Torah. Today's Misha Berach is for all of us. Please, God, may this year bring us all strength, resilience, hope, and above all else, health. came down with diabetes when he was 28 years old, which meant that all during my childhood and teenage years, I watched him inject himself with insulin twice a day. He always had to be very careful about what he ate and when he ate, which meant that on Yom Kippur, he couldn't fast. My dad loved going to shul. He loved the music and the prayers and the schmoozing especially. And we used to go together almost every week on Shabbos mornings. On Yom Kippur, he would spend almost the entire day there, except for when he took a break between services to go out to lunch. Sometimes I would go with him to the nearby coffee shop to keep him company. I'd sit across the table watching him eat his sandwich, a little enviously, I must admit, and I remember this one time I asked him, Dad, do you ever feel bad that you can't fast on Yom Kippur? And he smiled and he shook his head and he said, Nah, Yom Kippur is once a year and God knows that I have to eat or I'll get sick. Besides, how you act the rest of the year is what counts. 
Fasting means nothing if you're not a mensch, which is exactly what our Yom Kippur morning Haftorah is all about. It comes from chapter 58 of the book of Isaiah, where the prophet Isaiah scolds the Jewish people and warns them that fasting on Yom Kippur is not what God, God really cares about. It starts out with the people complaining, saying, when we fasted, didn't God see? When we starved our bodies, why didn't God pay attention? And Isaiah says, why? I'll tell you why. Because while you are fasting, you're still doing business and oppressing your workers. You are still arguing among yourselves and being selfish and deceitful. All the while beating your chests and raising your voices in prayer. You people are fake. You're phony. You're spiritual hypocrites. And then Isaiah quotes this powerful message to the people from God. And God says, this is the fast I desire, to unlock the fetters of wickedness, to let the oppressed go free, to share your bread with the hungry, and to take the wretched poor into your home. When you see the naked, clothe them, and not ignore your own kin. In other words, how we behave every day is what really matters. How we treat others, those in need, those who are suffering, those who work for us, those in our own family. That is what God is concerned with. That is how we repair on Yom Kippur. Because as a wise man once told me, fasting means nothing if you're not a mensch. Son, can you hear a song? May I find my way back home? Can you hear a song? Can you hear a song? May I find my way back home? We call to mind someone who's been good to us teacher, a friend, someone who brings a smile when we think of them. We open up our hearts and we offer to them a blessing. May you be Son, can you hear a song? May you find your way back home. Can you hear a song? Can you hear a song? May you find your way back home. We call to mind someone who is difficult to us. Someone who's a challenge, someone who we don't understand. We open up our hearts and we offer to them a blessing. May you be Can you hear a song? May you find your way 
brought to mind All the good in this community And all the love that we can share with one another Even from far away We open up our hearts And we offer ourselves a blessing May we be Dewey. It is a time to confess, to confess our truth out loud so that we may move forward with awareness and with purpose into the new year, into the next chapter of our lives. V. Dewey. It's time to confess. We respond now to each of the words of the ancient alphabetical acrostic, Ashamnu. I, 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 Ashamnu. Ashamnu. Bagadnu. Bagadnu. Gazalnu, Gazalnu, Ibarnu Dofi, Ibarnu Dofi, Hevinu, Hevinu, Vehir Shanu, Vehir Shanu, Zadnu, Zadnu. Hamasnu, Hamasnu, Hafanu Sheker, Hafanu Sheker, Ay, 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 Latnu, Latnu, Maradnu, Maradnu, Niatnu, Niatnu, Sararnu, Sararnu, Havinu, Havinu, Pasha. Hashanu, Sararnu, Sararnu, Kishinu Ore, Kishinu Ore, Ay, 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 We continue now with the Alchets, first the cantor, and then the rest of us repeating. Alchet shechatan lefanecha bechapat shochad. Alchet shechatanu 
for concealing the truth from ourselves. Forgive us. Al for laughing at the good intentions of others. Forgive us. Al for misleading others in our business dealings. Forgive us. Al for negotiating more than our fair share. Forgive us. For saying one thing and doing another. Forgive us. For acting with scornful defiance, forgive us. For pivoting away from our responsibilities, forgive us. For tormenting ourselves with envy and jealousy, forgive us. For keeping stubbornly our own narrow opinions, forgive us. For repeating slander about others, forgive us. For sharing and promoting prejudice, forgive us. For tarnishing our promises with breaches of trust, forgive us. We join together in the Alkula. Oh, say shalom in Roma. <laughs> 